Welcome to another video. We have an integration problem here from the MIT Integration B from 2018. And this is a very interesting problem because of all the, um, the tricks that are involved in integrating this. If you look very well at this, it is more like a multiplication, but what you're multiplying you're multiplying x, so there's a giant square root sign over the product of x and another x, but it's not just x, it is the cube root of x. And then this is the fourth root of x, this is the fifth root of x, and it goes on perpetually. Now, once you see perpetual multiplication, you're beginning to think this must be either an infinite series or some weird factorial, right? You have to think that way because of that continuous multiplication. Let's get into the video. So to do this integration, I am going to try to rewrite this because definitely a U substitution is not going to help me. And because there is no consistency, if this was all square root, square root, square root, square root, then I can say, okay, let me do some algebra. But at this point, I have to look at another way to write this because this, so let's say this is I. We can say that this is equal to the integral of this is the square root of x, so I can actually write this as the square root of x, which is x to the one half, multiplied by, because this, is, this just has square root on it, but now this is the square root of the cube root. The square root of a cube root is the sixth root. You see that? Yeah. So the square root of a cube root is the sixth root, which is going to be x to the 1 over 6. That's another way to write this. You can factor out the square root when you're done, which is what happened here. So here, it's going to be the square root of the fourth root, which is going to be, um, oh, is the square root of the cube root of the fourth root. So more like what you're having in the denominator, here it was 2, the next one was 2 times 3. The next one is going to be the square root of the cube root of the fourth root, which is going to be x times 1 over 2, the square root of the cube root of the fourth root. You see that? The next one is going to be, I think this just continues. I, let me not write even the last one, okay? So what you're having is more like the integral of a product of roots, but those roots are beginning to form a factorial in the denominator. So if we pay attention to this, definitely, when you multiply terms like this, what you end up doing to the exponents is you add all of the exponents together. So what we're actually saying is that this is the integral of x raised to power 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 times 3 plus 1 over 2 times 3 times 4, plus tap, 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 like that, dx. So all of this form the exponent of x. Yeah, that dx appear, appears to be crooked somehow, but the dx is for the integration. So what would this top imply? Now, this is where your previous knowledge will have to count. We know that this is basically starting from, this is 3 factorial, this is 4 factorial, this is 2 factorial, we just don't have 1 factorial, and we don't have 0 factorial. Okay? We don't have those in the denominator. So if, so uh, it is more like you have the entire factorials. So, what looks like this? And because that's what you expected to figure out. You have to figure out something that looks like this. So, let's recall. Recall that E, Mr. E, is equal to 1 over 0 factorial plus 
1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus and it goes on perpetually like that. So you could tell that what we have here is not E because we didn't start from here or here, we started from here. So if we can take care of this part, then the rest of it will be E. So it's more or less like you have E minus the first two part is what you have here. You see that? So we can say that the integral I is basically the integral of x raised to power the sum the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n factorial. That is the short form of this integral. So I have written the integral in this form. But when we write e, we know that e is equal to this. Starting from n equals, well, let's not use n, let's use k. K has to start from 0 to infinity of 1 over K factorial. There's just a slight difference between these two. You see that? So, what can I do to make this and this look the same? Well, we can shift the beginning. Okay? If I shift the beginning from N equals to, I want it to start from 0 like this one. What it means is that I have to say, then will be equal to, I'm going to do the first two parts. You see, I'm going to do these two parts separately. This is 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1, right? 0 factorial is 1, 1 factorial is 1. So E is going to be 2 plus the rest of it. And the rest of it is what we have here, is this guy here, okay? So E is equal to 2 plus this sum from n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n factorial. If we start from 2, we've taken care of the first two terms, and these are the answers for e, which implies, now watch this, this implies that this sum we have here is basically from n equals 2 to, in, to infinity is basically equal to e minus 2. If you move this 2 over here. Therefore, the integral, therefore, the integral we're trying to integrate is equal to the integral of x raised to power this. This sum is now e minus 2. And there's no other work to do other than to just integrate applying the power rule. If you apply the power rule to this, what do you think we're going to get? Let's finish it here. So we say that i will be equal to, remember you're going to add 1 and divide it by what you get. So i is going to be x raised to the power e minus 2 plus 1 over e minus 2 plus 1. What do we get? We get x to the e minus 1 over e minus 1 plus c. That's so cool. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.